It seems as cold as ever on Chacaltaya Mountain, 16,000 feet above sea level outside of Bolivia's capital, La Paz. Yet, it's global warming that has brought disaster to business owner Gonzalo Reimes. Once, this was a ski resort with snow-covered slopes all year round. But the glacier that coated this windswept mountainside with ice and snow has melted, leaving behind dry land and an abandoned ski lift. There are no customers anymore, there is no more work in this area. We have had to completely shift our activity, our ski equipment had to be sold, there was no more use for it. Tropical glaciers like those in Bolivia are more sensitive to temperature changes than glaciers outside the tropical boundaries. Their melting away is an alert signal for scientists around the world. And for the millions living below, they are primarily a vital source of water. When a glacier recedes, people's livelihoods are at stake. Often, disasters happen suddenly without warning. This disaster has been in the making for decades. Images show how Chakaltaya and the neighboring Huayna Potosi glacier have receded over the course of 35 years. We have a 43% loss of total surface area of all glaciers in the Andes region. With support from the Japan Policy and Human Resources Development Fund, regional scientists have started using sophisticated technology to predict the rate of glacier retreat. A Japanese satellite known as ALOS helps create a high-resolution stereoscopic image of the unfolding disaster. It's more accurate and less expensive than aerial photography. When Bolivian researcher Ed Ramirez and his colleagues sport 3D glasses, they have a clearer vision of the region's future water supply. But not everything can be done in the safety of the lab. The team makes a harrowing trip on Bolivia's high-altitude mountain roads. Eight monitoring stations have been set up across four countries in the Andean region as part of the Japan Fund project. But to get the full picture, the team must go even further. Bobbing on freezing glacial water, they also measure temperatures at the very bottom of this mountain lake. This shows the median water temperature. These sensors measure temperature every meter going down. With a scientist's data in hand, public officials can make better decisions. And they need to quickly. A substantial part of Bolivia's population is already suffering from water shortages. Especially hard hit, the countryside. Villages trying to cope with the problem often make the situation worse. Those upstream sometimes retain and divert too much water, leaving those below with little water left. Farmer Thomas Cortes is seeing his potato and onion fields wither. What shall we do? Go somewhere else? We need to find a solution because up there they sometimes cut the water off. One solution, supported by the World Bank administered Japan Fund, is to help farmers like Fortunata Laura build individual reservoirs to catch rainwater. Occasional rains help compensate for the dwindling supply of water coming off the mountain. Better irrigation methods also help ride out the dry spells. But it's not just agricultural areas that need help. The problem has also reached the city. The populations of La Paz and the adjoining city of El Alto are swelling, in part with people who are abandoning their farms because of the worsening water shortages. These people are migrants, our first domestic migrants, born of the adverse effects of climate change. There is a cost associated to this because these people come to squat on the peripheries of this city or the city of El Alto, and we have to provide them with basic services, drinking water and sewer systems. The city has no alternative water sources, so they must conserve their dwindling supply. 
As part of the Japan Fund project, crews measure and monitor the flow of water in order to identify problem areas caused by poor infrastructure or people illegally tapping into water pipes. For this neighborhood, it's become a crisis situation. Residents have to trudge daily to draw water from a single tap they must all share. Some wash their clothes here so they don't have to carry the water home. Others send their kids to fill jugs and bottles. Those who are old and sick come with wheelbarrows to carry water home. 400 families live on this side and there are 600 families on the lower side and these 1,000 families use this one faucet, which is insufficient. Luisa Maria Rita Songo cries as she pleads for more water for herself and her ailing parents. For 15 years she has been living here, relying on the one tap and on trucks that only deliver dirty water. An elderly neighbor is equally distressed. We need water in our homes. Besides, I have eye troubles, I can't see well, I'm not well. We need water, I need water urgently. I have no way of carrying it. Street view or satellite view, for scientists, the perspective remains the same. It takes a global effort to deal with a fragile planet.